Hi, it's Sue. Thank you for joining me for today's Bible reading. It is the reading for August 19th, and I'm reading Jeremiah 26 to 29 today from the World English Bible. Verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from Yahweh. Yahweh says, Stand in the court of Yahweh's house and speak to all the cities of Judah, which come to worship in Yahweh's house. All the words that I command you to speak to them, don't omit a word. It may be that they will listen, and every man turn from his evil way, that I may relent from the evil which I intend to do to them because of the evil of their doings. You shall tell them, Yahweh says, if you will not listen to me to walk in my law, which I have set before you, to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets whom I send to you, even rising up early and sending them, but you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh and will make this city a curse to all nations of the earth. It talks again here about them rising up early to send the message. I wonder what that meant in there. You know, I'm sure the audience understood that expression. And it is an expression because... Yesterday's reading had it several times. He talked about the prophets rising up early and sending these messages. Uh, verse 7. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in Yahweh's house. When Jeremiah had finished speaking, all that Yahweh had commanded him to speak to the people, the priests and the prophets and all the people seized him, saying, You shall surely die. Why have you prophesied in Yahweh's name, saying, This house will be like Shiloh and the city will be desolate without inhabitants? All the people were crowded around Jeremiah in Yahweh's house. Wow. So he's he's got a right heart. He's obeying God. He's speaking truth. And uh, what do they do? They seize him and threaten to kill him. Mm -mm -mm. So it says, when the princes of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to Yahweh's house and sat in the entry of the new gate of Yahweh's house. Then the priests and prophets spoke to the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy of death. So then they have a council about him and conspire together to kill him. Is that wild? Nothing changes, I tell you. Um, this man is worthy of death, for he has prophesied against the city, as you have heard with your ears. Same thing they did to Jesus. Verse 12. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the princes and to all the people, saying, Yahweh sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city all the words which you have heard. Now, therefore, amend your ways and your doings and obey Yahweh, your God's voice. Then Yahweh will relent from the evil that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hand. Do with me what is good and right in your eyes. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood on yourselves, on this city and on its inhabitants. For in truth, Yahweh has sent me to speak these words in your ears. Then the princes and all the people said to the priests and to the prophets, This man is not worthy of death. He has spoken to us in the name of Yahweh our God. Okay, that's more like it. So the princes and the people said that to the priests. Then certain of the elders of the land rose up and spoke to all the assembly of the people, saying, Micah the Morishite prophesied in these days of Hezekiah king of Judah, and he spoke to all the people of Judah, saying, Yahweh of armies says, Zion will be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem will become heaps, and the mountain of the house of the high place is a fort. So they're, they're pulling on an old prophecy that Micah gave to, when Hezekiah was king, and it confirms what Jeremiah is saying. So they said, did Hezekiah king of Judah and all the Judah put him to death? Didn't he fear Yahweh and entreat the favor of Yahweh, and Yahweh relented of the disaster he had pronounced against them? We would commit great evil against our own souls that way. There was also a man who prophesied in Yahweh's name, Uriah, the son of Shemaiah of kiriath Jerem, and he prophesied against the city and against the land, according to all the words of Jeremiah. When Jehoiakim the king, with all his mighty men and all the princes, heard the words, the king sought to put him to death. But when, he, when Uriah heard it, he was afraid and fled and went to Egypt. Then Jehoiakim the king sent men into Egypt, El Nathan, the son of Achbor, and certain men with him into Egypt, and they fetched Uriah out of Egypt and brought him to Jehoiakim, the king, who killed him with the sword and cast his dead body into the graves of the common people. But the hand of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, was with Jeremiah, so that they didn't give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. So they're steady digging their own grave here. But the people, remember the people, and the, what did it say, the, um, let me go back up there. The people and the princes 
were supportive of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a populous prophet, right? He spoke for the people. He spoke against the corrupt leadership. Um, chapter 27. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Yahweh says to me, Make bonds and bars and put them on your neck. Then send them to the king of Edom and the king of Moab, to the king of the children of Ammon, and to the king of Tyre and the king of Sidon, by the hand of messengers who come to Jerusalem, to Zedekiah, king of Judah. Give them a command to their masters, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, You shall tell your masters, I have made this earth, the men and the animals that are on the surface of the earth, by my great power and by my outstretched arm. I give it to whom it seems right to me. Now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. I have also given the animals of the field to him to serve him. All the nations will serve him, his son and his son's son, until the time of his own land comes. Then many nations and great kings will make him their bondservant. It will happen that I will punish the nation and the kingdom, which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, says Yahweh, with the sword, with famine, and with pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. But as for you, don't listen to your prophets, to your diviners, to your dreams, to your soothsayers, or to your sorcerers who speak to you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you to remove you far from your land, so that I would drive you out, and you would perish. But the nation that brings their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serves him, that nation will I let remain in their land, says Yahweh, and they will tilt it and or till it and dwell in it. I spoke to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his people and live. See, again, he's saying, just submit to them and you'll stay alive. If that goes along with yesterday's and the day before's readings. Um, Don't listen to the words of the prophets who speak to you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. I have not sent them, says Yahweh, but they prophesy falsely in my name, that I may drive you out and that you may perish you and the prophets who prophesy to you see it's just like the devil to bring up this controversy so that people are confused and not sure you know what god is saying verse 16 also i spoke to the priests and to all this people saying yahweh says don't listen to the words of your prophets who prophesy to you saying behold the vessels of yahweh's house will now shortly be brought again from babylon for they prophesy a lie to you so I guess that first excursion, they took some of the vessels of the temple with them. So these false prophets were telling them, not only are you not going to come under the rule of Babylon, they're going to bring stuff back. Don't listen to them. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Why should the city become a desolation? But if they are prophets, and if Yahweh's word is with them, let them now make intercession of to Yahweh of armies, that the vessels which are left in Yahweh's house, in the house of the king of Judah, and at Jerusalem, don't go to Babylon. For Yahweh of armies says, concerning the pillars, concerning the sea, concerning the bases, concerning the rest of the vessels that are left in the city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, didn't take when he carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah from Jerusalem, to Babylon and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, concerning the vessels that are left in Yahweh's house and in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem, they will be carried to Babylon. And there they will be until the day that I visit them, says Yahweh. Then I will bring them up and restore them to this place. And we see that restoration later on in Ezra and Nehemiah. Really great part of the Bible. I love it. So stick with me. All the way through these prophets. Wonderful. I love all the Old Testament. Um, but the prophets are great. The minor, the major and the minor. Uh, and beyond. Um, Ezra and Nehemiah are not in the major and minor prophets, um, but they're two of my favorite books. But anyway, I digress. Chapter 28, verse 1. That same year, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, in the fifth month, Hananiah, son of Azar the prophet, who was of Gibeon, spoke to me in Yahweh's house in the presence of the priests, and all the people saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel says, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years, I will bring again into this place all the vessels of Yahweh's house that Nebuchadnezzar, 
king of Babylon took away from this place and carried to Babylon. So he's lying. I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah who went to Babylon, says Yahweh, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests, in the presence of all the people who stood in Yahweh's house, even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen, may Yahweh do so. May Yahweh perform your words which you have prophesied to bring again the vessels of Yahweh's house and all those who are captives from Babylon to this place. So I guess he's being facetious here. Then he says, verse 7, Nevertheless, listen now to this word that I speak in your ears and the ears of all the people. The prophets who have been before me and before you of old prophesied against many countries and great kingdoms of war, of evil, and of pestilence. The prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of the prophet happens, then the prophet will be known that Yahweh has truly sent him. It just sounds like he's being facetious. And it sounds like he's saying prophets generally prophesy warnings more than peace. Although, you know, we also have that, there's always that, that future hope. So I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Verse 10. Then Hananiah the prophet took the bar from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and broke it. Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Yahweh says, Even so, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from off the neck of the nations within two full years. Then the prophet Jeremiah went his way. So I picture Jeremiah walking away, shaking his head, <laughs> because they just had this confrontation. And, you know, who are people to believe? So, you know, I guess they had to go before God and seek the Lord, you know, look in their own heart and get before God and, and let him show them that who was right. And I'm sure for anyone with their eyes halfway open, they could see that Jeremiah was correct. Verse 12. Then Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah after Hananiah the prophet had broken the bar from off the neck of the prophet. Jeremiah saying, go and tell Hananiah saying, Yahweh says, you have broken the bars of wood. You have made in their place bars of iron. For Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel says, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will serve him. I have also given him the animals of the field. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Listen, Hananiah, Yahweh will, has not sent you, but you make these people trust in a lie. Therefore Yahweh says, Behold, I will send you away from off the surface of the earth. This year you will die because you have spoken rebellion against Yahweh. Whoa. So Hananiah the prophet died in the same year in the seventh month. Okay, I paused the video, and I don't remember if I said chapter 29, verse 1. Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah, the prophet, sent from Jerusalem to the residue of the elders of the captivity and to the priests. So, wait a minute. The residue of the elders of the captivity. So, the few of the elders that were left in Jerusalem. To the priests and the prophets and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. So, he's prophesying to everybody. After Jeconiah, the king, the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. By the hand of Elisa, the son of Shaphan, and Gamariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, it said. So this is a letter that he wrote. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives whom I have caused to be carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon, isn't it just amazing we have this ancient letter that Jeremiah wrote? How amazing to be able to read this. I just I just love that. It's okay, so if it was around the five hundreds, so that's what, like twenty five hundred to three thousand years ago. Let me start over with the beginning of the letter. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives whom I have caused to be carried away from a captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and dwell in them. So they, okay, so not just a tent city at this point, or maybe at this point it was. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and fathers and sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and don't be diminished. So there, that goes just like in Genesis and, and after Noah when they were told to multiply. Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to Yahweh for it. For in its peace you will have peace. For Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, 
Don't let your prophets who are among you and your diviners deceive you. Don't listen to your dreams which you have caused to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says Yahweh. For Yahweh says, after 70 years are accomplished for Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. You shall call on me and you shall go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So in a sense, the thought that's coming to me is, it's like God took these precious people that he loved away from the corrupt leaders. You know, he had entrusted this flock to the priests and, and uh, the elders, and they became corrupt. So it's almost like he took this little flock and moved them under the care of Babylon into this safe place here, because he's saying, you know, because now he's speaking tenderly to the people. But actually, he wasn't just speaking to the people, because it says up here he was speaking to, well, the first thing it says is all the captives, and, no, yeah, yeah it's, it's to them. Yahweh, let me go back to begin the letter. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives whom I've caused to be carried away, build houses, etc. So, yeah. It's like he took this little little flock and he says, I'm going to start at verse 11 again. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. This is God's true heart, his loving kindness. This is why he was angry to begin with, because people were being mistreated. God's economy was not being honored. You know, it becomes a terrible, uh, oh, the word just flashed in my head, but, you know, um, basically the haves and the have-nots, right? The distribution of money becomes imbalanced and just people aren't being cared for. So this is precious. Um, thoughts to give you a future and a hope. You shall call on me and you shall go and pray to me and I will listen to you. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says Yahweh, and I will turn again your captivity and will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I've driven you, says Yahweh. I will bring you again to the place from where I caused you to be carried away captive. So he's, they were traumatized, you can imagine, but he's pouring in the oil and the wine here, the, the love, the comfort. Verse 15, because you have said Yahweh has raised us up prophets in Babylon, Yahweh says concerning the king who sits on David's throne, and concerning all the people who dwell in this city, your brothers who haven't gone with you into captivity, Yahweh of armies says, Behold, I will send on them the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, and will make them like rotten figs that can't be eaten. They are so bad. I will pursue after them with the sword and the famine and the pestilence, and will deliver them to be tossed back and forth among the kingdoms of the earth. To be an object of horror and astonishment, a hissing and a reproach among all the nations where I've driven them. Because they have not listened to my word, says Yahweh, with which I sent to them my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, but you would not hear, says Yahweh. Hear, therefore, Yahweh's word, all you captives whom I have sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says concerning Ahab, the son of Koliah, and concerning Zedekiah, the son of Messiah, who prophesy a lie to you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will kill them before your eyes. Curse will be taken up about them by all the captives of Judah who are in Babylon, saying, Yahweh make you like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire. Because they have done foolish things in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives and have spoken words in my name falsely, which I didn't command them, I am he who knows and am witness, says Yahweh. So this is why you know, the Lord has shown me some things throughout the 40 years of walking with him through just revelation and understanding of his word and, and other ways, you know, that knowing and your knower and, and just things about the times. And, um, for instance, I knew emphatically that Trump was going to win the election and it wasn't for him till, till God began to show me this, but I knew he would win and I knew he would win by a landslide. And, um, the Lord told me he will be, this was in 20, early 2016 or late 2015. The Lord told me he would win by a landslide, be the most loved and most hated president, much like Benjamin Netanyahu. And that's a quote. So I know for a fact, the Lord told me that, but this, it says here, you've spoken in my name falsely. That is why I'm so careful to say what, 
I believe God has shown me. There's a lot of things that I'm, I might tell a friend and family, but I'm very careful about making it public because I, I never want to commit this foolish act of saying that God said something which he didn't say. I'm very, that brings a fear of the Lord on me. I, I don't want to ever do that. And so, you know, we make mistakes, but I tend to say, I'm pretty sure, I think God showed me this. I feel like he's showing me that just to kind of guard, guard myself. All right. Verse 24 concerning Shemaiah, the Nehelamite, you shall speak saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel says, because you have sent letters in your own name to all the people who are at Jerusalem and to Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, Yahweh has made you a priest in the place of Jehoiada, the priest, that there may be officers in Yahweh's house for every man who is crazy and makes himself a prophet, that you should put him in the stocks and shackles. Now, therefore, why have you not rebuked Jeremiah of Anathoth, who makes himself a prophet to you? Because he has sent to us in Babylon, saying, the captivity is long. Build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit. See that? That's disgusting. The, the message that Jeremiah gave them was so precious. And here he is twisting it into something negative. Just like the enemy to do that. Zephaniah, see, and also this one, well, I only have one paragraph left, but this other thought is that, you know, the land was in such chaos because of these evil rulers. Um, you began to have anarchy, violence. Um, you had uh, the lack of justice so that especially the weak, and the, the lower classes were being taken advantage of and, and used and abused. The widows, the orphans, the foreigners, um, <clears throat> you know, the women, the children. So the land was in chaos. They weren't abiding by God's order, his system of order that provides for everyone. You know, this is, this is what, let me just go on a little diversion here. This is what socialism tries to emulate. It makes the government God, and they can never do that. Instead of just submitting to God and letting him, his economy, rule. His has the ultimate checks and balances, the ultimate justice, perfect justice. And you can see when you're reading scriptures, there's times when people turn away from God and their land is desolate. And it's usually the leaders and their land is desolate. And, and nothing you do is going to help that situation. I mean, of course, we want to feed people and take care of people. but until they repent and turn their heart back to God, you know, if you push God out, you can have a vacuum where darkness comes in. It's just, it's just the law of birth. So letting him control all that is, well, we don't have any choice in that. And when we try to take that over and take the reins and the governments take over, that's where you get socialism and communism and these despots. Uh because the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. All right, last few verses. Verse 29. Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the hearing of Jeremiah the prophet. Then Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah saying, send to all the captives saying, Yahweh says concerning Shemaiah the Neolamite, because Shemaiah has prophesied to you and I didn't send him and he has cursed you to trust a lie. Therefore Yahweh says, behold, I will punish Shemaiah the Neolamite and his offspring. He will not have a man to dwell among this people. He won't see the good that I will do to my people, says Yahweh, because he has spoken rebellion against Yahweh. And that's the end of today's reading. Doesn't really say about the fulfillment of that prophesy against Shemaiah, but he can be sure his day is coming after that proclamation. He will not have a man to dwell among his people. He won't see the good that I will do to my people, says Yahweh, because he has spoken rebellion against Yahweh. Well, that's it for today's reading. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow for two chapters, 30 and 31 in Jeremiah. Bless you today.